Hey, what's up, guys? My name is The Channel. Welcome to episode 29 of Game Programming. So, uh, in the previous episode, we took a look at this render tile class and how that sort of works. Um, and uh, actually, we, we sort of took a look specifically at the offsets and how the offsets work. And, you know, the concept of offsets, of course, is very important in, uh, in game programming. And today, we're actually going to move on to completing this render tile method, method and talking about a little about how how tiles actually, uh, you know, get rendered into our screen in the end. Now, you might have noticed I'm sort of using a different version of Eclipse. I'm actually using Eclipse uh, Juno now. Um, now, by default, one thing that I hated about Juno, and I'll actually tell you why, why I changed my Eclipse version in a minute, but one thing about Juno was, um, pro tip here, uh, in general and in appearance, by default, it's set to Windows 7 theme. I hate that. So set it back to classic. And it'll change it back to what uh, Eclipse Helios and what Eclipse um, Indigo actually looked like. And, uh, and you'll be fine with that, all right? Uh, animations as well. I haven't actually... Yeah, this fading this fading stuff, I might just get rid of that as well because I'm used to the... Uh... There we go. Oh, much better. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, well, one of the things you'll actually notice is if I run the game... Um, I actually got a new computer. I actually built myself a new computer. So you can see that the, uh, the frame rate pretty much doubled. Um, so uh, be warned, you know, I didn't actually change any code. You haven't missed anything. The game is still running at the same speed for you guys. It should be. I just upgraded to a faster computer. So that's why, that's why the frame rate doubled. Um, anyway, back to, uh, back to this. I'll just adjust my microphone because it's kind of getting annoying. All right. So... Um, so yeah, let's just take a look at this. So in, in game programming in general, you know, um, we're sort of dealing in a two dimensional, uh, like spectrum right now, right? We've got X and Y to deal with. So a good, like a good thing to just, just think about is whatever we do to Y, we typically actually have to do to X as well, because we're trying to do it in two dimensions, right? So because of that, we literally just copy and paste this again, and we change all of the Y's into X's right? Because we want to be able to do the same thing in terms of offset, uh, in terms of offsets for X as well. And you might have to, uh, oops, one too many. You might have to seal that as well. All right. So again, obviously the tiles are square, which is why the tile sprite size is, you know, it's the same width as it is length. So we don't have to change this at all, but everything else gets changed into X here. And that's sort of what happens, right? With the offsets, we can offset through Y and now we can offset through X as well. So um, the next thing we need to do uh, is actually uh, restrict our screen. So you can see here that we had this continue thing uh, and what and what what would happen is if we would get if if we got to the the edge of the screen it would sort of cut it off so that we wouldn't get any array index out of bounds exceptions. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing here except a bit differently. So if x a so again if this x a which remember is not just the x position of the of the sprite it's also the offset. So in other words, it's the it's the absolute x position x x absolute. Um, if it's less than, uh, we'll just say less than zero. Um, I'll set it less than zero uh, for now, just because I want to show you guys what will happen if I actually set it less than zero uh, instead of a, a different value, because um, it's actually a really cool effect that I'll show you guys in a bit. But um, that, uh, if XA is, so that, sorry, I just said that. Um, that obviously means or. So if, XA is less than zero or XA is greater than and equal to, uh, is greater than or equal to a width. So width obviously is referring to our almighty screen width, um, or YA is less than zero or YA is greater than or equal to width. Then we want to break and Oh, it did remember my um, control shift F thing. So that's nice. All right. Um, yeah. So obviously what this code is saying is if, for example, a tile were to exit the screen, stop rendering that tile. Okay. If we don't do this, um, it won't necessarily give us an array index out of bounds exception, but what it will do definitely is take up system resources. If we don't really want to render the entire map, if we're just in a really small portion of this. Now, because what, what I'm saying here is only render the tiles that we see, theoretically, 
the, the size of our map could actually be pretty much infinite. And of course, when I'm talking about programming and computers and technology, the word infinite means pretty much infinite. <laughs> Not really, because obviously you can't imagine an infinite number. It can't do that. But what I mean is, realistically, the number is very high. That is how much the only the only restraint here really is the RAM and how much it can actually how many tile objects um, with with the X and Y coordinates and the type of the tile it can actually create. So what this does and what like the way that I'm going to structure this is that the maps are basically going to be infinite. Now, um, what that few things that that means, um, I'm going to get more into uh, into actually map creation a bit later on. But uh, another cool thing would be um, we could have a Minecraft style random generation going on. Um, probably at a much simpler scale though, because again, we don't need uh, the Z. We're not doing we're not doing in three D here. <clears throat> but what I mean is um, because you know the maps are infinite, we could have something like that going on, and that would actually be relatively easy to create because um, of the way that we're sort of doing this. Because again, remember this is a two D game. We're not storing. Uh, things like 3D models of maps, there's, it's a lot easier to actually create larger maps. So think of Realm of the Mad God, but all of the realms or something are in one. Or something like Skyrim. Think of Skyrim, but every location is already loaded <laughs> into, into, your, into one file. So um, yeah, like the whole, of the, whole of, the, of the world is like one file. Uh, that's very possible. So again, when, when we actually do make critical decisions as to how maps work. Um, I'll get you guys in as well. Uh, maybe like a poll, I'll do like a poll on Facebook so that you guys can vote for um, how we're gonna do that. So I'm really excited to be able to do that in the future. But for now, what you need to understand is this line of code here is very important because it, um, <clears throat> it uh, essentially, it's, it grants us that ability. It's basically, if you miss this line of code, um, I don't actually know if the game will crash. I, I'm I'm guessing it will, but it whether it will or uh, oh, actually, I don't think it will. Um, no, it will. It definitely will. But um, the point is, make sure you only render what you can see on the screen. Okay, that's your lesson for today. Make sure you're only rendering and you're only actually using resources for what is visible on your screen. Um. Next line of code is, next line of code is going to be pretty simple. It's simply going to render the tile. Uh, the um, it's going to render. It's going to render the tile onto the screen, right? So again, it's pretty much the same as this here. So pixels x a plus y a times width equals uh, sprite. So this time we're not actually accessing a static sprite. We're uh, sorry, actually we're accessing this tile. So tile dot sprite um tile dot sprite dot pixels and then of course we're just gonna do um now this is actually something that you guys might be confused by we're not actually gonna do offsets because again uh we don't need to deal with offsets it's just one sprite the look like, this is this deals with where the sprite gets rendered like in other words which pixels on the screen get rendered and this deals with which pixels of the sprite get rendered. So obviously at no point in time are pixels on the sprite actually offset. So in other words, that's why we need to deal with X and Y, not X, not X, A and Y, A, because we're not dealing with offsets here. The tile does not, the actual image of the tile does not get offset. Its location on the, on the screen does. So X plus Y and then times tile dot sprite dot size. And that is it. So that is how the render tile method works. Um, tomorrow, or sorry, the day after tomorrow, we'll, uh, we'll actually get on to making, um, well, we'll actually get on to rendering tiles. So in other words, you can see in the tile method, uh, sorry, in the, um, yeah, in, in our grass tile, for example, in the render method of that, we're not actually using that, but we will utilize this render tile thing to hopefully render a, an entire level full of grass tiles next time but that is how the render tile works and i uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming if you did please hit that like button and uh and yeah we'll move on to we'll move on to actually rendering it next time so i'll see you guys later bye